You already know Kowloon Restaurant, established in 1950 and spanning four generations, serves a multi-Asian menu. Did you also know that Kowloon Restaurant is New England's premier Asian dining and entertainment complex, serving Cantonese, Sichuan, Thai, and Polynesian cuisine? And did you know that Kowloon Restaurant is also the home of the finest Japanese sushi? If you haven't dined at Kowloon Restaurant lately, then you simply haven't dined at Kowloon. Kowloon Restaurant, Route 1 North in Saugus. This is Shelton R Benjamin. This is Harley Race. This is Mick Foley. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. This is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the country, around the world, I'm Dan Marotti. Here on Wrestling Inside is joined by the man. So many women left their heart in San Francisco at WrestleMania 31. We're talking about John Cena Sr. Johnny, pleasure to have you here. Show me the way to San Jose. Well, hey, that's I a wish they could all be California girls. Wow. <laughs> Johnny, so much has happened in our worlds the past couple of weeks. Great experiences. You had a great experience. I had a great experience. I wanted to share that with the fans, maybe to entice them to try and go out and do the same next year. Let's talk a little bit about WWE Hall of Fame, WrestleMania 31. You were there. Talk about your experience, Johnny. I know you had a big limousine set to come and pick you up at the fabulous compound, fly you out to San Jose. Did you fly to San Jose or San Fran? I flew to San Francisco. Um, with my private jet, and then I had my limo take me from San Francisco to the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose. Um, I can't talk about the Hall of Fame because I wasn't there. How come? That's another story for another time. They, uh, <laughs> apparently my tickets were not in line, or they were in line, but, um, but it's okay. It's not their fault. It's mine. So I can't speak to the to the Hall of Fame. You didn't watch it on the network yet? I did not. Okay. I, I do not. I, I prefer not to do that. I would prefer to see it live. Um, I, a good friend of mine, uh, several good friends of mine, Larry Zabisco, great human being, great uh, professional wrestler. He missed the T. All time. those that, well, that's because he lost his speech. Larry uh, and I talked the night before the Hall of Fame, and what he wanted to say was illuminating. It was just great. Um, he had lost the speech, which that's what caused the problem. Um, he tried to get all the thoughts, and they were all kind of upside down. But all those people that said to me, who cares about Larry Zabisco? Well, you can now because he's a legend. So now they're booking Larry Zabisco. Um, Would you like to see Larry Zabisco in this studio? I've had a lot of fun with Larry. Um, uh, you know, I, I understand that his kid may even be on Tough Enough. Oh, really? Uh, yep. Cool. He, yep. I've met his son several times. Great professional wrestler. You know, I hate to digress, but sometimes we just have thoughts. You know, if Tough Enough is going to come back as a regular series, annually, biannually, however it may be, what if they had, a, almost like how UFC has mixed it up with certain themes to their um, the Ultimate Fighter is what they, their version of Tough Enough, if they had a, a, just a second or third generation series, that'd be something different as opposed to just... Guys and girls, they're taken off the streets, but that's neither here nor there. I just, you so, know, yeah. when ideas come to me, I like to share them. Kevin Nash made a great uh, love. Hall Kevin of Fame Nash, speech. love uh, Kevin Nash. Bruno San Martino for the introduction of Larry Zabisco was outstanding. Um, you know, you actually, you had some great inductees. I can tell you one thing that Alonzo Blaze um, was just right on. Medusa was right on. Did you ever met Alondra, uh, uh, Medusa not, before? I never had the chance to see her. I saw her at the hotel. Um, what a great person, great human being. So professional at the Hall of Fame with her speech. Um, what a nice way to see those two come back together again. When you thought that was a relationship, 
that might never be repaired. Well, I like her little shtick at the end when she said, the belt is back. Did you see the t-shirt that they sold of her? Uh, no, I didn't. They made, well, they made different t-shirts for each Hall of Fame inductee, and hers was a trash can <laughs> with the women's belt coming out of it, and on the back it listed her different accomplishments in wrestling. I, I had great, never seen anything great. like Rikishi, that. Rikishi, another great human being. You know, Rikishi well got a lot of heat, and I, I agree yeah. with it, yeah. because I think a lot of Scotty Too Hotty, I think Brian Christopher, Grandmaster Sexay is an asshole, but Scotty Too Hotty is one of the most genuine people you'd meet. He is. And they helped get Rikishi the character over when he came back as the fat guy that danced. And you know, that, that, I thought Scotty Too Hotty was on point when he took a couple of shots at Rikishi online. Because you know what? Would a sentence have hurt? No. And I think what happens is, you know, it, it, when, you, when you're king, the power goes to your head. When you are inducted into any type of situation, I always say to my sons, when you reach the top of the ladder, never forget who held it for you to get to the top of the ladder because the same people who hold it for you coming down. Otherwise, you're going to come down with a crash. Nobody will be there to hold it. So I think, you know, we forgot to mention those people who got me to where I was, the Rikishi. Uh, I, I think that's bad. Last year, Mr. T never mentioned Roddy Piper. Never mentioned. Well, he Roddy. only mentioned one person. <laughs> His mother. Um, yeah. Um, but anyway, another story for another time. Um, Lenny Poffo accepting on behalf of the Macho Man. We all knew there would be a poem. Uh, Did he give himself any uh, no, self-satisfaction in the back? I, I don't even know anything about that. I don't even know where you're going. But um, <laughs> Lenny. You Lenny, know where Lenny was going. <laughs> I don't. This uh, ask Ole Anderson. He was a nice guy. He uh, Lenny's a great guy. Great friend, and uh, uh, you know he. We I'd love to have him here. Tell the stories of the Poffos. Uh, well, if you and got, I like Lenny. If, Lenny. You, if you've got the dough, I'm sure he's on the go, as Lenny would say. Well, I want to know who you want to talk to, brother. Well, Sometimes our tastes uh, differ, I guess. Whoever you have, we can deal with. Um, but I, I was quite impressed with um, the chocolate championship belt in the Fairmont Hotel. Um, I have you know, we forgot before we go to there the, for the Hall of Fame, the guys that stole the show, in my opinion. Whoa! Now, I didn't even ask you. Did you see Bushwhacker Bush? Was, Bush? I was going to mention them. Um, yes, I saw them both. Did you send a hello for me? I didn't. You know what? I forgot. What I'm do, sorry. What, what do I ask? I was just so I awestruck. love that guy. Oh, so awestruck. I can imagine your words, and, sure. Um, but what a great speech they gave. That's because they were genuine. Uh, and, and engaging. They did not, they were not, what's the word I want to use? Awestruck by the power of the light. They stayed to where they belonged. Yep. They said where we, who we were, where we came from, and we thank you. We thank you for who we were and what we are. And that's so important. You know, um, it really pulled on the strings of my heart to see Butch there. Because I, I'm getting a little emotional, as you can tell by my eyes. But that guy almost died. I thought your underwear was too tight. The guy was in his bed dying yep, so before the story Luke goes. found him. So the story goes. You know, with feces and, you know, going in the bathroom all over himself well. for days because he couldn't get out of bed. And the fact that our little event that we put together, and you know what bothered me a lot was Jim Neidhart was there, but that's a different story for a different time after the theft that was involved. But the little event we had in Revere, Massachusetts was able to raise enough money for the guy to have a computer put in his home so he could work a job as a customer service representative. Imagine that, calling for customer service and having Bushwhack or Butch answer the phone until he got to the point where his health declined that he had to move back to New Zealand. I was worried that he might not be able to make the trip, but I was so happy he was. Even well, if he was he, fine. No, he was fine. He looked great. He is great. Made me so happy, uh, He was there with his wife, I believe. Um, great, great, great couple of guys. Um, I had the opportunity to, to talk and meet with a lot of them. Um, and, um, you know, I'm just... I'm humbled by the fact that they take the time to speak to me, you know, because I, I am who I am. I'm just me. Um, and uh, I really thank all of them for the respect and, and taking their time to speak to me and, and shoot the breeze. And I, I just can't thank the WWE enough for all they've done. And, and I'm not trying to kiss anybody's butt here. I'm a very genuine person, as you can tell from what I do with you and other people. I'll tell it like it is, and I'm telling it like it is. I have nothing to gain. 
So, uh, but it was great. The Hall of Fame was tremendous. I did see some people in the front row. There was one empty chair, if you notice, uh, next to Cena. That was my chair. Uh, I, again, we'll, we'll tell you sometime what happened, but it was my fault. Um, so anyway, enough about that. WrestleMania itself was outstanding. Oh, what a... Out what an at you talk about an event you know what people can say ah, pro wrestling sports entertainment for what wwe wants to be right now that was the forget about extreme rules wrestlemania 31 was the perfect event for what wwe wants to be in 2015 that is wwe if they carried that through to perfection through, if they carried that theme through the year there'd be no question and 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 i was just awestruck i mean I was there for, the, for all the events, uh, but what would happen is when uh, Nikki Bella wrestled for the, and her sister wrestled, then um, their mother, brother, and cousin would come and sit for the match because I really struck it out big with the family because I'm cheering for Paige and AJ. Um, and the reason is, seen as a face, you got to cheer for the faces. So, um, but that didn't make any points. Um, you made a lot of friends in that front row. I did make I a lot of I saw you hanging out with Sika. No, I wasn't hanging out with him. You weren't hanging out with Sika? No, oh, I thought I saw a shot of the two of you. No, I was nowhere near him. Um, as a matter of fact, um, once that match started, there were not enough seats. So I gave up my seat. You were, were you standing by the pole? Is that what I, I'm thinking? I was standing on this side over here. But that's I just, what I, okay, that's right, what I saw. I gave up the seats because there weren't enough seats. Right. Um, so I gave up my seat to watch that match. Um, outstanding match. Every single match on that card. Uh, was absolutely outstanding. Um, I can't, and that, that stadium is unbelievable. It's just state of the art. Uh, to have that show begin in the daylight, it gave it a completely different atmosphere, which was great. Um, the matches, were, I, I don't think there was a bad match on the card. You can say what you want about the women's match. You can say what you want about Sting and Triple H. Sting and Triple H gave you some moments in that match that you won't forget. That was the Monday Night War all over again, plus the great entrances. I don't know if you could see what Triple H's yeah, entrance was with like. The robots. Oh, you, but I mean, could you see what oh, they yeah. played on TV with the vision and oh, yeah, so yeah, on? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was incredible. I just think they did it all wrong with that. They should have had those robots shoot to the ring, and there should have been Spocks coming off the ring like they do when they do it at Universal Studios. Um, I think it was a great entrance, though. Outstanding entrance. Ruzef with the tanks and the, the Russian army. Outstanding. Um, the little dance and scarecrows. Cena's entrance. Um, I think was really touching, and not because he's my son, but it said an awful lot about who the United States of America is and why we won't give up. Um, the Scarecrows with Bray Wyatt, that was just real. I mean, you had to be there to appreciate this. It was really, really scary. Um, take his entrance. It was just dark enough so you could appreciate it. Um, you know, the, uh, obviously, the highlight of the night was the Brock Lesnar-Roman Reigns fight. match. Fight. The, it was a fight. Fight. I will tell you this. I was in the front row. There was some um, real deals being done in that ring. And um, I don't think the would-be champion would be any match for the man he was up against. I really don't. I don't think there's anyone in WWE that could. I, I, I you know what? That's an animal. I, he is a great person. Don't get me wrong. Um, but well, I don't know. I, I've told you the story about how I was attacked the night before WrestleMania 20 in New York with the rotating door and with the hotel the guys stayed at in New York well, City. Different story for a different I time. I can only tell you His this. wife is exquisite. He is. He is who he says he is. There's no baloney about Brock Lesnar and the one thing about Brock is he'll back up everything he says but that doesn't make him a bad person he's no. a good human being but he's and you know what he's all business and when he gets in that ring you better hope unlike Cena who got 15 suplexes Triple H who got his ass kicked Undertaker who got kicked you know you better hope you're not in the ring with this man and, and I think the one mistake that was made and and I don't know if you could see it at home, but um, his opponent was laughing at him as he punched him. That's when the gloves came off. And there wasn't too much laughing after that. Um, I don't know if he that... He gives you your money's worth. 
And then when he went nuts on Raw the next night. Oh, that was great. They never should have stopped that. They never should have suspended him. Obviously, he... They have to because yeah, of the time contract, to be part of the storyline. But um, what do you think is going to happen with him heading into SummerSlam in Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, in August? Who do you think his next victim is going to be? Rollins. Let Rollins hold it for the summer, and then I, I still would like to see a Rusev, Brock Lesnar match because now you've got but, somebody. Well, you got to look at it. Yeah, I'm not saying it's the Rock against the Rock. If you want to, go, you know. But the, obviously, the storyline fits with Brock Lesnar wanting to destroy the man that cost him the belt, and that's right. Seth Rollins. But that's not going to happen. Because so you, you, don't think we'll, put, you don't think we'll see that at SummerSlam? He won't have the belt if it happens. Because you cannot put Roman Reigns against Brock Lesnar. It just No, won't. I'm talking about Rollins and Lesnar at SummerSlam. And Lesnar wins the belt. Right. Well, obviously, the, the man that, that they want, or you seem to think they want, is Roman Reigns. To put him in that ring after what I saw at WrestleMania, let me tell you something, Charlie. That it, it, now you know, once the man takes the, the gold, it's make-believe. All right, how about let me throw this storyline at you? And we talked about this before WrestleMania 31 a couple of months back. What if... Lesnar gets the gold back, he destroys the authority, battles them through the fall into the Royal Rumble. What if you have a position now at WrestleMania 32, you know, the dream match scenario has been thrown out there about who they want to put Brock Lesnar with. We'll see if that happens or not. But what if you did Reigns and Lesnar again next year with this time, it's one-on-one, -on -one, no interference, and that's where Reigns gets the gold with a clean victory over it. Ain't going to work. You don't think that'll Ain't work? Ain't going to work. No? Nope. And I'll tell you why it's not going to work. Because take a look at what he did to him at WrestleMania 31. Do you think it's going to be any different? Do you think he's going to be any lighter on him? Absolutely not. He's, he's a beaten man when I'll... it comes to Lesnar. Um, so my only thing is, now they want Lesnar to face who? Next year at WrestleMania? Well, there's been a lot of ideas thrown around. Brock is one of them, but I, they already set up Brock and Triple H, which I think would be a really... If The Rock's available. I think he knows his schedule well enough in advance um, with his movies. You know what? I, 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 I would only say this. A man involved in so many movies, I'm sure his body is insured with Lloyds of London. Because to get back into the ring, and be as rusty as he was before. And I don't mean that to be derogatory. Um, yeah, he was just rusty. It had been but, a long time. Right. And to get back into that ring and sustain a possible injury, because when you're in there with Triple H, one thing's for sure. You'll know you've had a match. Um, will it sell tickets? Yes. Uh, Brock Lesnar against... Who would you put Lesnar against? The supposed Austin. dream match on the table is that they'd like in a perfect world to see Stone Cold return one That's more time in front of 100,000 people in Dallas, mm. Texas. Mm. I need to be there for that one, Johnny. That well, is going to be, be there. I'll be happening. there. I'll definitely be there. But um, Well, next year, you and I are going to hook up on these two next year because you know what? We go out and do all these great things, and then we have to tell each other about them secondhand. You know well, what I mean? Well, the thing is with me, um, I never know when well, I'm going to get superstar. there. you're a superstar. I am a superstar. I'm just a jabron. Absolutely. Uh, I'm oh, a jabron. I'm so, oh, and The Rock finally admitted that the word jabroni is not his. If you see the documentary on the Iron Sheik, he said that came from the Iron Sheik. Oh, he used that a long time before yeah. The Rock. So, uh, well, The Rick admitted that it's it's In Sheik's. the movie? Yep. Oh, it's great. Sheik's. Um, anyway, so what would you say? To, and I forgot to mention that you were involved somewhat in the Sting match. No, I wasn't. Well, when Sting and Triple H were battling near your seat, they almost physically made contact with you, and then you started rooting for Sting heavily. Uh, that doesn't mean I was involved. Uh, that I was just a spectator. They just happened to be in my my area at that time. But it, in no way was I scripted or any part of that match. People need to know that. It just wasn't there. Did you have a chance to go to any of the fan accesses or the uh, NXT? No, no, you missed it? No. What would you say to someone that's on the bubble about experiencing WrestleMania, not WrestleMania the event, but WrestleMania week next year in Dallas, Texas, or in any WrestleManias in the future? If you don't make at least one WrestleMania in your life and take advantage 
of all there is at that full week. Um, I can only tell you this, that, I mean, I was, if I wanted to go to the NXT show, it was there for me to go to the NXT show. I think you flew in on Thursday, right? No, they were having the show. I came in on uh, Thursday, or Friday, Thursday. Yeah, it was, it was Thursday night at 10. No, I came in Thursday at 3 o'clock. Oh, so you could have made it. And it, uh, it was a long travel day. <laughs> they, uh, they said to me, you know, if you want to go, it's there. If you want to go to Fan Access, John's signing, he's, you can go. You should have signed. Um, not right. I, nobody wants How many to autographs did you sign at WrestleMania this year? I don't know. Uh, Hundreds? I don't know. Thousands? I don't know. Anyway, I know in Orlando it was 4,000 was the estimate at WrestleMania 24. Anyway, you signed 4,000 autographs and you're telling me you don't belong at the fan access signing? Anyway, Come on, brother. Anyway, All I right. can only tell you this, that it took exactly three quarters of an hour for the NXT tickets to sell out. Hot ticket. Gone. I mean, you couldn't beg, borrow, or steal one of those. That's how fast those tickets sold out. Fan access every day was sold out um, as far as signing and, and, and people involved in autographs. Um, and then it, obviously when it came to um, the WrestleMania show itself, I could not in my whole life, I mean I was in New Orleans, I thought that was something to behold. But to get into um, Levi Stadium and to see that fill up like a, a bowl of popcorn, um, I just Absolutely could not believe it. The show was unbelievable. I will say this, and I probably will get in trouble. I think I experienced the worst bunch of fans of my life at the Raw show the night after WrestleMania. Why? Disrespect for the wrestlers, doing the wave during the matches, um, screaming obscenities to Natalia, Nikki, uh, AJ. It was just totally, totally disrespectful. What were they saying to the girls? I don't want to repeat it on the air. So. I mean, was it that bad? Yes. Really? Yes. And, um, you know, I'm used to the let's go Cena, Cena sucks. I think they're all a bunch of sheep now. It's just a thing to do. I was watching Extreme Rules last night. Let's go Sheamus. Let's go Ziggler. Ziggler sucks. Sheamus sucks. You know, it's like, I don't think they really know what the hell they want. And, and, and my whole opinion is, here's a guy, and I'm going to use my son, defending the United States of America. And you're booing him and you're wearing a Rusev shirt. Well, welcome to the communist state of Russia. That's all I can say. No brain, no pain. Um, but I was, I have, I have never, and I, it was kind of funny because, and this, this is comical, you might get a kick out of this. I come out of the arena for Raw. And there's a bunch of people from uh, various countries, I'll use that. Sure, sure. And they're all yelling at Cena sucks. Yo, Cena sucks. Cena sucks. Oh, sing along with his theme so, song and now. They're yeah. holding up. A, they're holding up a sign. So I went over and I said, "Hey, does Cena really suck?" Oh my God, it's his father. Oh no, no, no. We just. I'm going. You know what? Will you take a picture with us? I said, "Why? Cena sucks." Bye. And it was. It was rather comical. And the same thing happened when we got to a, spot, uh, a stoplight because we were going out to eat after the show. Um, there are a bunch, a group of people in the stoplight saying, ah, oh, Cena sucks. And I just walked up and I said, gee, hey, it's awful nice to meet you. I'm John's dad. And I really don't, you know me, I never, ever, as Chris Jericho would say, say that to anybody. But this kid just simply turned white. It was like, Oh, I'm sorry. I said, no, it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. You bought it. You were walking the streets or yeah. were you in a car? No, I walked. Oh. Why not? San Jose, there was three or four of us. It was fine. Betty? And, uh, at night. Yeah. So Betty? What's that? You were with Betty? <laughs> Can't keep that far enough away from me. <laughs> I, I, after John's match at WrestleMania, um, who does he come down and give a hug and a kiss to? Betty Skolan. Um And nothing against her, but you know what? All I heard on the WrestleMania show was, and there he's over there shaking hands with his dad. They didn't get a shot of it, though. Not that I care, because, uh, <laughs> and I don't, and I really don't, because they certainly have had enough shots of me and John um, congratulating each other. But um, I just thought that was, you know what, God bless her. She's a wonderful human being. Um, but, She's ready to bless you, but that's a different but, story but, for a different but time. But like acne, 
sometimes you need to use the Clarisol. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So, Johnny, you're going to turn a WrestleMania experience almost into a vacation if you're going to go, because there's so much to do if you really want to take it all in. I could not do a whole week there. Um, I get in on Friday, a Thursday night. Um, Thursday, what did Friday, you do Friday? Um, what were you Just doing? visited with people? Or? Yeah, uh, uh, come out of the hotel, obviously met a lot of fans. I went to a place called Psycho Donuts, which uh, was my downfall. Uh, you had a few donuts. Oh, this place is unbelievable. Uh, the, the, uh, the clerks are all dressed as nurses or doctors, and uh, it's Psycho Donuts. They have some weird flavors. Um, WWE brought a bunch into the, the green room there. Um, they were just devouring those. So we all had to taste those. Um, coffee shops, just seeing a little bit of San Jose. Um, uh, and outside of that, uh, like I say, it was pretty quiet. What was this chocolate belt you were talking about? The, um, the, the belt that, um, as, and it, it, I'll give you a funny story about that belt. Um, as you walked into the hotel, um, the Fremont Hotel had made a replica of the championship belt. Mm -hmm. And that belt was made of pure milk chocolate. And the funny part about that belt is when Big Show entered the hotel, he thought that the chocolate around there was to eat. So he started munching on the chocolate. What they were trying to do was get $1,500 for the belt <laughs> um, for cancer. Oh, really? And he ate it? He didn't eat the belt. Oh. Uh, around the belt, there was chunks of chocolate. Oh, nobody would eat the belt. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I left that night, um, nobody had bought the belt. Um, this shows you how smart Who did they want to buy the belt? A fan or someone yeah, in fan. WWE? No, a fan. Well, but they weren't fans staying at that hotel, were they? Yes, they were. You can. Oh, you, WWE didn't block it off? Um, they were on one side, the wrestlers on the other side. But this is a picture of the belt, all made out of pure milk chocolate and sprayed with wow. gold. Wow. Yep. Uh, sprayed with gold. Could you forward gold. that to me so we could put it on the show so uh, fans can I see can it? I can that to you. That's sure. pretty cool. Yeah. It's, um, I was amazed when I saw it. Nobody, uh, nobody bought it. Uh, you know, what are you going to do with the chocolate belt for 1500 bucks? That's a kind of a fancy design. I offered Fabo bucks, but they, they just simply wouldn't take them. Um, redeemable anywhere, but they wouldn't take those. But I, I can only tell you this, that um, that was another amazing, amazing thing. The fans were amazing in San Jose. I can tell you this. Um, they were very polite. Um, some, some of the people that, that came to me for autographs definitely uh, came from the poorest section and needed some help, which we did. We took care of them. Um, but uh, I, I, was, I was very honored that people would think enough of me to ask me for an autograph. And you are very humbled by that. Well, I, and I, I know am, that's a, a I fact. I am very humbled by that. Uh, I'm, I'm humbled by the fact that the WWE stars, uh, you know, speak to me and do what they do with me. Uh, I just, that even includes Randy Orton, uh, who's a great human being, regardless of what's happened in the past. Just a great person. So um, I had a great conversation with The Undertaker. I was honored by that. Um, it was fun. It was it, it definitely, if the good Lord allows me to be here next year, um, I definitely will be heading to Dallas, Texas with my friend Johnny Martin, um, who's kind of like my, my partner when we get down there. Um, now who's Johnny? Is he involved in the world of wrestling? Of, or? No, he's uh, a coach at one of the, and a, and a guidance counselor for Springfield High School. Oh, okay. Um, he was one of John's friends at Springfield College. Uh, so they kind of get together at WrestleMania or when he's in Springfield or whatever it is. I think April 18th was it that John was inducted into the Springfield College Hall of Fame. I wasn't present for that. I don't think John was there. I don't know. Uh, but I, I think I they were got, all overseas at that yeah, point. I yeah. never got a call. So um, it's an honor. That's, you should have accepted the accepted, award, yeah. but that's a different story for a different time. It's okay. I'm only who I am. So WrestleMania 32, what would you say to a fan that says, geez, I might want to go. I'd really like to go, but I don't know. You go. got a year to plan. Go. Go. Make yourself a little vacation club. Um, I don't know what it costs to go. Uh, maybe $3,000, $4,000. So not on my budget. <laughs> well, I think that's what it costs to go um, for the week. Um, if you want to go for the whole week, 
I think it's, uh, I think I saw it online, it was like 40. Oh, you're talking about the WWE travel package. packages. We can yeah. put a link to that up for fans to check it yeah, out. I don't know if they're available for Dallas yet. but Not yet. It's worth every penny because you get, uh, you get fan access, you have admission to that, Hall of Fame, WrestleMania, NXT, um, so the package includes a lot of things. Um, if you don't, then you'll be like everybody else. Um, you'll be in a hotel removed from, right. all, yeah, from all the action. Um, you know, to get to Levi Stadium, uh, we had coaches that took us there, uh, lodge coaches. And um, it's an amazing experience. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Um, Nancy wants to keep going back. Uh, she was with me in Orlando, um, and um, WrestleMania, I keep telling her, is my thing. I let you go where you want to go, and so the one thing you have to do is, this is, I hate to quote a phrase from a song, but this is my time. My time is now. <laughs> and, uh, so that's my WrestleMania moment. I tell you... That's a great experience, but I want to tell folks a little bit about the Cauliflower Alley Club reunion in sure. Las Vegas, which was a t two weeks after WrestleMania this year. You know, a lot of folks aren't familiar with the Cauliflower Alley Club. You can visit caulifloweralleyclub.org for information on, on how you can great, join the great nonprofit organization. But each year we have a reunion in Las Vegas. This year it expanded to four days. And I mentioned, I think, in one of our previous programs, I got stuck. I had to sleep over in Minneapolis on the Friday night on my way, and I arrived in Vegas Saturday morning. I was so busy with the reunion, and I was there for five nights, I didn't have a chance to do anything in Las Vegas itself. Saturday, I ran into some friends. We had a nice dinner. Um, we were discussing the concussion uh, initiative. They're trying to come up for all sports beyond professional wrestling with Dr. David Reese and Oscar, who speaks very highly of you. He said he had a nice conversation with you out at WrestleMania. We did. Very nice person. You like Oscar. I, he's a good man. Well, Oscar is trying to do some great things. Dr. David Reese, I'd love for you to meet him. Then Sunday night, there was a wrestling show. Uh, you had Ada Johnson in the front row. The fans were going nuts over that. You had a variety of independent guys, some of the legends that were in town. There was another Monday you checked in. There was a whole memorabilia and nostalgia room that you could go through. You had vendors selling various merchandise. Monday night, there was a second show, which was kind of featured more of the solid performers, Jushin Thunder Liger defended the NWA championship belt that he held on that show, which was a pretty cool experience. Tuesday, you had seminars all day for free for the members. Great insight you could get from the legends there. Jerry Briscoe gave one that I wish the independent guys up here would have heard, but that's a different story for a different time. Tuesday night was the baloney blowout. I ran into WWE friends from the office that I had no idea were going to be there. That was great. Um, I ran into Kevin Sullivan on the Monday, who I hadn't seen in 18 years. I had a nice conversation with him to tell him how much value I got out of him being around Tony Rumble CWA, and that meant a lot. And then for the next three days, you know what we talked about? Boston Red Sox. He's a wow. huge fan. He's from Boston, obviously. Wednesday afternoon, there were more seminars, and then Wednesday night was the main event, the reunion itself, where there was an award ceremony. But they gave away a lot of awards at the blowout. There were so many folks... Um, that were honored at this. You had some of your friends, Gail Kim, Lisa Marie Varon, Victoria. Was Chef Bob Irvine there? He, no, she said he wanted to be there, but something came up with his taping schedule. Oh, he's a great guy. Beth Phoenix. Oh, another great human being. Edge was there. Well, that's his uh, wife. JR and Jim, uh, Jan Ross were there. They were looking uh, for you. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, uh -huh. Sergeant Slaughter, Ricky uh, the Dragon Steamboat. Another good friend. JJ Dillon, the ho uh, host. Another, another good friend. Stan Hansen and Terry Funk. Uh, Terry Funk once said to me, we did a wrestling show, and he really, uh, quite a guy to work with. And then I got in the locker room and said, hey, things are good. He said, I still don't trust you. <laughs> He's a funny guy. You had the destroyer, Dick Byer, there. And there is a gem of a guy. Be, you know, if you look at the history of wrestling, he had his match with Ricky Dozan in Japan. 73 rating. That's more than what the Super Bowl does in the United States. And you know what? He's just a guy that a lot of the mainstream fans aren't familiar with. He didn't do a heck of a lot in WWE. But to have him there each year at that reunion, Butcher Vachon, another great guy like that. Larry Henning stole the show with his induction, the reward he received. Uh, 
Wes Briscoe received the Future Legends Award. That was kind of strange considering his age, but, you know, he's still trying to make a go of it in WWE as he pounds the independents every weekend. Jerry Briscoe. I mean, the list goes on and on. Axe and Smash Demolition, I love. You know, what really made me feel good was that I went over to Barry Dasso. Barry Dasso actually got out of his seat, came over, and gave me a hug. And that made me feel really good because as a kid, I loved Axe and Smash Demolition. Did I thought I ever... you had money you owed him. No, 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 no. Uh, you've seen the studio shoot interview we did back in June, I think, the night I got admitted into the hospital. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, you haven't seen that one? No. Oh, I'll send you the link if you ever want to enjoy it at home. It's been seen by over 100,000 fans, FYI. Very good interview. Um, but the fact that this guy that I admired as a kid, and then, you know, eventually we brought him here for a studio shoot interview. We had him at a live MWF event in Salem the night you got hospitalized by Tommaso Ciampa. Yep. Um, and then for the guy at a reunion to not only be at a reunion with this, imagine as a, a kid in elementary school that someday I'm going to have a wrestling show with this guy on it. I'm going to be at a TV studio doing an interview about his career with him. And then to be at a dinner with him where he was going to receive an award. And for not only for him to say, hey, but to get up and come over and give me a hug and extend friendship. I can't tell you what that means to me as a human being. You know what I mean? To get respect from those types of people is what always says to me, with the independent people in this area, at least, that disagree with a lot I have to say, when those veterans treat me with that kind of respect, that makes me feel really good. And it, it makes me feel like well, I do things the right way most of the time, or at least I attempt to do things the right way. That, it's made me feel great. Awesome Kong and Freight Train Dan. I saw them the night we were going home. Great Had couple. a great conversation great with them. At the Fridays, we, the wrestling people pretty much shut down that restaurant at the bar and the eating. It's a lot of fun. I, I can't tell you, I, I mean, I'm a Dennis Brent, perfect example. I knew Dennis Brent. I met Dennis Brent when I was working with Ed Cohen in WWE back in 2000, 2001, but it was all via email. Then after that time went, I still had a lot of interaction with WWE when it came to the Millennium Wrestling Federation stuff. And Dennis and I were great friends. He was a very good friend of Paul Bear. Paul Bear broke him into wrestling in world-class championship wrestling. But for 14 years, Dennis and I were good friends through email and then eventually Facebook. But we never met in person. At the reunion, after 14 years, we finally met in person. How cool is that? Well, maybe next year I'll, I'll make it an effort to get to the college. You are going to be there. You are go I'm going to say this, no matter Plane what I tickets. have to do, I am going to try to make that happen. And I'm to tell you this, fans, each week we're going to feature one reunion in our Wrestling Insiders. Nice. Not one reunion, I I'm one in induction great. presentation. That's great. Frankie Kazarian was there. I know you're friendly with friend. him. Good personal friends, yep. It's great. I don't To put the whole induction on at one time may be a little bit much. So I want to break it down. And award ceremony, award presentation by award presentation to let fans really enjoy what I enjoy. Because the footage came out great. We had a new wireless microphone kit, yep. so it came through crystal nice. clear. The only, the only thing I can say was a bit much was the, the length of them. But every, you know what? It was their night to tell their stories. Great. And I want fans to enjoy it. I like that. So next year, my goal is to get to Dallas, and my goal is to get you to Las Vegas along with me. We'll see if that happens. Well, fans, that's our experience. Again, we're running out of time in this segment. Johnny, we've had travels in our days to say this. I'll tell you this. When I was stuck in Minneapolis, Minnesota, if fans only knew who, quote, unquote, babysat a very distraught Dan Marotti, that is a story I have to save for the book. But I'll tell you this. The folks at the Marriott in Minneapolis, they are outstanding. There you go. Especially the girls at the desk. There you go. I'm not going to touch that one with a 10-foot pole. Well, you were busy with Betty. All right. That's oh. a different <laughs> <laughs> For the fabulous one, John Cena Sr., I'm Dan Marotti. Until we speak again, folks, be well.